Welcome, everybody. Yes, happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Phoenix Seventh-day Baptist. And if you're ever in the area, please stop and worship with us. This is for the people that are watching. Let's see. Oh, our first hymn. Would our choir director please come up and uh, help us with that? Because well, the scripture today is one that I'm guessing a good number of us could probably say without looking. But I'm going to read it just to make sure I get it right. This is Philippians 4, 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Before we pray, um, you know, we who are here, of course, have you know, learned this morning, Ardeth is not with us for the rather bad tooth problem today. So she's at home resting and uh, trying to deal with the pain. And so we want to, you know, we've all already agreed we're praying for her. But let's do that together while we're here. Um, yeah, okay. And um our 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 normal October church business meeting I think was already postponed once to tomorrow. And now it's gonna be postponed again till a week from tomorrow. So stay tuned and uh keep an eye on your on your email if you're a member of this church. And we will have that meeting. So let's be sure and pray for that meeting. Um, but one other thing, some of us who, who are here on uh, Thursday, uh, Sue, um, Susan was sharing, you know, asking prayer for her son, uh, Matt, who I guess for a long, long time has been going through a very, very difficult life. And uh, and so he was asking prayer for him. Uh, is there anything else anybody has before we pray? Send them mom. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we're, we're uh, just humbled to know that prayer is a, as well as being a responsibility, it's also a privilege, something you have commanded us to do, and you have enabled us to do. So as we come before you now, it's, it's just only through the, through the name of the Lord Jesus as he has taught us how to pray and taught us that we should pray. So, Father, we, we want to worship you as part of our prayers. We give thanks to you for your mercy and for hearing and answering as we, as we come to you. So, Father, these needs now, we just want to lift up before you. We ask your blessing on, on uh, Ardeth. She is dealing with a... With a Apparently a new situation for her, having tooth problem. And uh, we ask that you will bring healing and that you'll give her relief from the pain, that you'll make it possible for her to uh, get to a dentist quickly and get this taken care of. Father, we hold up uh, Sue and, and her son, Matt. He, Father, you know all the things that have been going on in his life for apparently many years. And uh, Father, he just really needs your touch. He needs your grace. He needs your help. And so bless him and use Sue and others to minister to him, we pray. Father, we also hold up uh, uh, Justin. Ask for your blessing and healing. We pray for Priscilla's mom. And, uh, and again, thank you that you are with her and blessing her. Father, these needs and the needs of our church, 
the future of this congregation, we commit to you. And ask that we that we be able to lean on you and trust you. And so give us wisdom as we look ahead to what you have for us and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, well, you've all heard this story, but uh, I learned something this week. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a minister. I'm just a common guy. So as Jesus is being brought to the temple, the priest, uh, they're just, they want him gone. And uh, so they take him to Pilate because they don't want to deal with it. We'll let Pilate do it. He'll do a great job. But Pilate didn't really want to deal with it either. So he says, hmm, I'll let the people decide. We'll let the people decide what's going to happen. So Pilate brings out Barabbas, and uh, people holler for Jesus to be crucified, not, uh, not uh, Barabbas. So uh, he's probably really mixed up in his mind. He washes his hands of it, says, I have nothing to do with this. This is all on you people, not me. So our Lord is put on the cross. And he says, and this is in John 19, 28, all things were now accomplished. And then he said, it is finished. But he really didn't say finished. That was King James Version. You go back to the Greek, and I'm sure Steve will look this up. He used a different word, and I'm terrible at English, so I'll try to uh, P-E-L-E-S-P-A-I. -E -E as Telestai. Well, it's close. And so I, I kind of looked it up and I said, wow, what, uh, what does that mean? Well, it comes from T E L E W, bring to an end. And I'm sure he's, well, he said many things on the cross. He thirsted, where are your father? Why have thou forsaken me? And then he said, it is finished. And he hung his head down and gave up the ghost. There was a Roman soldier there, Marcus. He said, this was the son of God. Can you imagine the people? I'd be scared half to death if all of a sudden it got dark. The earth starts shaking. You know, people are coming from the temple, the, the, the veil ripped from top to bottom. Maybe God uh, had something to say right then. But that word had three different meanings. Number one, in the business deal, you're in a business, you've sold something to somebody. The debt is paid. The debt. He paid our debt. Number two, if it was a court sentence and you and I were sentenced to go to prison 20 years, it wasn't a short sentence that he got away with. He paid the sentence in full. And the third is a military, as a military war, the battle is won. The battle is won. That's the third meaning. The battle over sin is won. So what do I do? What do I have to do? Or what do we have to do? To be saved. How do I get saved? 
I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. I want to see all my loved ones. It'll be so great. There won't be any hate. There won't be any killing. There won't be no death. Even our little fur babies, when they die, it tears me up. I had two little dogs. I've had kitties. I'm Victoria had a little hamster. When they die, it tears your heart up. And they're not people. When we read the Bible, it gives us things that we should be doing. But if I read the Bible, is that going to save me? If I do a lot of good things, will that save me? How about if I just say nice things to everybody? Is that going to save me? Oh, I go to church every week. Does that save me? What if the pastor tells me to do certain things? Does that save me? What about if I hand out pamphlets? or papers to somebody, is that going to save me? But if I give money to the church, that's going to sure save me, right? How about I get baptized? Is that going to save me? Oh, I give a ride to somebody to church. That's definitely going to be saving me. Or if I just pray to the Holy Spirit, I'll be saved. All right, I eat clean food. I don't eat any unclean food. You know, the Bible talks about that. Well, I keep the Sabbath. That's definitely going to save me. We think, well, I haven't killed anybody, so I'm pretty good. How about keeping all the commandments? Is that going to save you? I'm just going to love everybody. For sure, God will save me. No, that's not going to save me. None of those things. There's only one way to be saved, and it's through Jesus, our Savior. We have to believe in our faith. Whatever your faith is, you definitely have to believe it. It's got to come to your heart that you love Jesus, that he died for you. If you don't believe in your faith, we're going to have some problems. We can only get to the Father through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So after we give our hearts to Jesus, he says in Revelation, if you love me, Keep my commandments. So he's kind of telling us that uh, there are some things after we've given our heart to God that he wants us to do. How do I keep the commandments? The commandments are a mirror. When you look at it, it shows you where we have mistakes. I have mistakes. We all are sinners. But it points them out. So what do we do about that? We ask God to forgive us. We ask for his help to overcome. And with his help, we can overcome. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like that. I know that for a fact. I prayed for two years personally because I had a dirty mouth. I worked with guys in construction, and the language there is like a sailor almost, you know, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. And it, it can be bad, and you could pick that up as a young person, and all of a sudden you want to be like these guys, you know. I'll say the same words. And uh, I didn't like it. It started bothering me. I prayed. I said, God, 
help me to overcome. I don't want to be talking this way, especially if I'm in front of a Christian and I say, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they won't be interested in Christianity. They'll think, well, what a, what a fake, you know. I prayed two years, two years. All of a sudden, it was gone. And I, I, I still couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it today. You know, he answered my prayer that quick. It just, well, two years isn't real quick, but it took that long. And maybe it was my fault not praying enough. I don't know. But it did happen. When we have a problem and we see in the mirror that there is a problem, we've got to pray about it and keep praying. Don't just stop and say, well, he doesn't want to answer my prayer. You know that old saying, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, when we pray constantly, he hears us. Now, I mentioned that list of things, going to church, keep mammoths. Does that mean we don't do them? No. That list is to keep us in doing good things for the Lord. Bringing somebody to church, handing somebody a pamphlet, let them know about Jesus. You know, I, I love that part where Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. And I thought about that, many mansions. It's a lot of mansions. I mean, look at all the people that have ever lived on the earth. There's got to be millions. At least I think there is, you know, that are Christians that believe in God. So what do you think of the new Jerusalem when it comes down? Have you studied the size of it? 1,500 miles square. And 1,500 miles up. That's a lot of mansions. Our atmosphere here on the earth only goes 1,100, but it goes 1,500. It kind of gives me the chills. You know, years ago, I studied uh, the stones that are in the foundation. They're all clear. Rubies, sapphires, diamonds. The gates are pearls. The streets are gold. Talk about a mansion. It's like a rainbow when God's light will shine out of that city. It'll be gorgeous. Yeah, 1,100 feet high, gold streets. The colors, imagine the colors. And it's all because of God's grace. We give our heart to Jesus. He helps us to overcome. But even then, you know, when Jesus was on the cross, he could have said, I don't want to do this. Get me down, Father. Forget this. But he didn't. He stayed on the cross and died for you and me. So we can be with our Heavenly Father in mansions. That's just exciting to me. Yeah, he didn't need to save us. He could have said, let them all die in the flood. Let them all die. That's it. I don't want any more to deal with it. He destroyed the whole earth. He could have just said, okay, take the boat out. I changed my mind. What a wonderful God we have. We need to be ready. We need to be ready for when he comes. It could be short. You know, he's going to come and take us home. I want to be there. I hope you do too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
we're your children. Yes, we make mistakes, but you help us to overcome. We want to go to heaven with you. We want to be part of your family. It's going to be wonderful. We look forward to your son coming and taking us home. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn, Trust and Obey. I love that song. Our choir director will come up now.